Hi, this is Mike from Mike's Unboxing Reviews and How To, and on today's video, we'll be taking a look at the pretty awesome and very solid U Green High Tune True Wireless Earbuds. Keep watching to find out more. Okay, so in today's video, we'll be taking a look at the uh, pretty awesome, I must say, the U Green High Tune TWS Earbuds. Kindly, these have been sent to us by Ugly Bob. Once again, thank you, Ugly Bob. We do appreciate you sending this stuff for review purposes. For those of you that don't know Ugreen, Ugreen actually make a ton of different peripherals, components, headphones, etc., etc. To be honest with you, mostly I know them through things like USB cables and USB hubs, that kind of thing. So I was actually quite surprised to see they actually did true wireless earbuds. I didn't expect them to be particularly good, I'll be honest with you, because you don't normally associate the name with the brand and the kind of the type of product. So, yeah you're uh, leaving yourself open a little bit, but I've got to be honest with you, if you're just watching this and you want to know if they're worth buying or not, then the answer is yes. You don't really need to watch the rest of the video, but obviously if you do, it certainly will be helpful too, and you will find out some things, some tips and tricks, and also what these work best with and what they don't work best with. So let's get on with it. So first of all, taking a look at the packaging, and we'll talk about the specs as well. So obviously, as you can see, it's the Ugreen Hi-Tune True Wireless Earbuds with support for APTX. So for those of you who don't know what that is, essentially it is a better codec for using Bluetooth. There are various levels of codecs, so starting at the very bottom, you've got things like SBC, which is your standard Bluetooth protocol, which works with pretty much every device on the planet. Moving up from that, you've got things like AAC, which is what is primarily used for iPhones, those kinds of things, iPads, that sort of thing. Moving up from that, then you've got APTX, and also APTX Pro, APTX Low Latency, etc., etc. But essentially what APTX does is reduces latency, gives you a better sound quality and a better codec, and is all supported with Bluetooth 5.0, which these run quite happily with. Moving on to the side, it tells you about some of the specifications. So we've got Bluetooth 5.0. We've also got an incredible up to nine hours of playback time from a single charge, which is absolutely brilliant. We've also got smart touch control, which is yeah, kind of what you expect these days. You've got a great feature of both mono or stereo mode, so if you want to, you can use one bud on its own, or you can use both together. Obviously, it does make a great deal of sense because of noise cancelling, etc., and sound quality. You want to use them in stereo if possible, but if for some reason one of your buds hasn't got any charge, you can quite happily use them in mono mode, so there is an option. And the last part they talk about at the end there is the Qualcomm chipset. So this is using the Qualcomm QCC3020 chipset, which is actually quite commonly used in a lot of buds on the market these days, and for a lot of good reasons. For one, it is actually pretty cheap. Secondly, it's very good quality. And thirdly, the noise cancellation is pretty darn good. Also, the range for the Bluetooth on this is up to 10 meters, and it does seem to live up to its hype, although it will depend on your surroundings. If you're in a home environment and you've got solid brick walls, etc., that's gonna be diminished greatly. But if you're living in a slightly more open place or you've got wooden walls, that kind of stuff, then you're gonna get much better transfer. That is one of the limitations of Bluetooth, unfortunately. On the back of the box, it talks about the specifications and also the control. So the control of these is actually one of the things which really surprised me, how intuitive it actually is. All the controls just make sense. Now we are talking touch controls. So on each earbud, there is a touch sensor. So you just tap it on the sides and it's the usual thing. So it's one press to play and pause, two taps to go forward a track, three taps to go back a track, press and hold for a couple of seconds to bring up your onboard assistant. And you can press and hold them for about six seconds to turn them off manually or press and all right, two seconds to turn them on manually if for some reason they've turned themselves off when they're not actually in the box. Now don't worry, you don't have to do this every time. The actual carry case itself actually acts as a means of auto on and auto off. So literally lift the lid, take the buds out, they're ready to go, take them out your ears, put them back in the box, close the lid, and they start charging and automatically turn off. So all of that is taken care of automatically, but you can override it as well by just pressing the buttons, which is absolutely great. Another cool feature, which is uh, not always seen on these type of buds, is the super bass feature. So the sound profile as they come out of the box is actually really, really good. But if you do want to increase that bass and the overall frequencies, you can tap the buttons on the side, either side doesn't matter, four times, and then that will enable super bass mode, which, like it says, uh, yeah, increases the bass. So I'll quickly drill down through the specs on the back of the box. Uh, I'll put it on the screen, full screen, so you can read it as well. So this is the model WS100 from Ugreen. You've also got profiles. So you've got HSP, you've got HFP, AVRCP, and A2DP. Frequency response is listed there. Also Bluetooth range, and like we said, the codecs are APTX, AAC, and SBC. 
and you've got the frequency response there, which is pretty standard these days from 20 hertz up to 20,000 hertz, which actually is pretty respectable for earbuds. One of the interesting things actually, well, for me personally, is the actual earbud capacity. So these, each one have got a 60 milliamp hour battery in there, which gives you that stunning nine hours of playback time. Now, obviously, I'm not gonna sit in a place and use them for nine hours straight because that's just insane. Not many people would, I wouldn't have thought. But certainly I've charged them up once since I've had them and I haven't charged them again since and they just keep on working. So yeah, they do have an extremely good runtime. You do get up to 27 hours of playback time with the included power bank. So one full charge of the buds is nine hours. Then you've got another two full charges pretty much from the power bank. So yeah, 27 hours. For most people, if you're using it for your kind of weekly commute to and from work, maybe an hour to work, hour back sort of thing, they're gonna last a week, absolutely no problem. If you're taking them away for a weekend, yeah, realistically, they're gonna see you through the weekend very, very easily. But if they don't, it's not a problem because you can easily charge them up with USB Type-C. So anyway, that's enough waffling. Let's get on and actually see what they're like. First of all, in the box, we should go through the accessories. So you do get the instruction manual, which is actually really good. Multilingual and color coded on the side so you can see which one is yours. And it's all done in plain, simple English and makes a absolute ton of sense. It tells you about all the control features, uh, how to do a factory reset. So if you get any issues with how to reset them, that kind of thing, you can go ahead and do it very easily. Uh, I might even make a video on it, but it's ridiculously simple. Literally put them in the box, press and hold the buttons for about 10 seconds and yeah, that is it. It's very, very simple. So yeah, maybe I won't do a video on that. Next up, we've got the actual buds themselves, which are extremely small. So if you're looking for something which is really portable and can be easily carried around, isn't gonna be a pain in the backside, literally, when you sit down, then yeah, these are really great. I was surprised actually how small they were. Considering the size of them, you would think they're gonna be rubbish because obviously they can't be that good if they're that small, but actually, they're really, really surprising. I'm gonna say it again, I said it at the beginning, these are what I would consider a solid pair of TWS earbuds. They really are in all senses of the word. So solid as in the plastics, you've got really good hard case plastics on there with a nice sort of satin sheen. It does pick up a few greasy fingerprints now and then, but again, it's not the end of the world. The case itself is uh, really good and it's got a kind of a dual clasp on the top. So you lift it up, you've got a, f a little bit of resistance there. Now when you get it towards the back, there's another bit. So it kind of locks the lid in place. So even if you uh, tip it on the side, the lid won't fall over, which I actually really appreciate because quite often when you're trying to get these things out, maybe you're doing it one-handed, you lift it up a little bit and you get it like that and then the, the lid collapses. So little things that I really do appreciate in terms of the design. And talking of the design, the actual shell, the whole thing works really, really well. The buds themselves, which we'll take out now, are extremely nice. They are finished in the same sort of top as this, so like a satin finish. Again, they will pick up a few fingerprints, but are actually really lightweight. And when you've got them in your ears, they don't feel like you've actually got them in at all. Ear tips themselves you come with three sets, which we'll take a look at in the rest of the accessories shortly. And also you probably notice from a close up there, there is actually a tiny little hole in the top there. So that is designed for basically your noise cancellation. So there's four microphones in total, one on each bud and two inner ones. So the two inner ones kind of monitor what is actually being played back and what you are hearing inside. It kind of uses that to differentiate between the two. In calls, it works particularly well. In fact, we've got a uh, demonstration of what it's like in a FaceTime call, so we'll play that for you now. Okay, this is a sound test of the Ugreen HiTune True Wireless Earbuds. This is a FaceTime call between uh, myself and Kath. And um, hopefully the audio is coming nice and clearer. This has got noise cancellation, so any background noises should be kind of eliminated, but hopefully this is coming out nice and clean, crisp and clear, and uh, sounds pretty good. So, let's get back. So as you can see, microphone quality, absolutely usable, really nice, really crisp, and yeah, very, very good. No complaints there whatsoever. And we'll actually have to try and do this outside in a, a more active area, although, yeah, that isn't the easiest thing to do at this particular time of when the video is being produced, but still, mic-wise, yeah, no problems at all, and certainly much better than the onboard device in the, uh, the iPhone itself. So, yeah, happy days there. That works very well. Again, really nice, solid plastic construction. Ear tips fit extremely well. So if you're looking for something for sports, these are gonna be absolutely brilliant, or maybe you're doing hiking or something where you're kind of bouncing around a little bit. Even for dancing, I guess, these are gonna be absolutely perfect because the way they fit in your ear, it, they are very, very snug. Now, I've changed the ear tips on these. You do get three sets included. You get a large, medium, and a small. 
And when you're actually putting these in your ear, there is a kind of a good way of doing it and a bad way of doing it. Well, bad way is probably not the right way of saying it, but essentially when you put them in your ear, you put them in and then you want to kind of twist them into position and that gives you a really, really snug feel and the sound quality is excellent. When you're removing them, because they're such a snug fit, there's a tendency for when you pull them out of your ears for the actual, uh, the silicon tips to actually fold out on themselves because it's got that good a seal. So when you're actually taking them out of your ear, before, don't just pull them out, just give them a little twist the opposite way and then pull them out and they come out absolutely perfectly. So looking a little bit closer, so again, you've got the microphone port there, you've got the two charging prongs there which match up with the case, which we'll go back and take a look at now. So actually in the case itself, you've got these little receptacles there and it's all magnetic, so that just pops in and is held in place and doesn't want to come out. No, that's pretty good, doesn't want to come out. Also on the case, you've got the charging LED, so it tells you what's going on, the power of the power bank, etc. And when you close it down, it just goes into charging mode. Although the LEDs on the front are a little bit hard to distinguish what's actually going on for a while. They kind of think about what they're doing. So at the moment, as you can see, we're just charging this single bud by the light kind of coming on and off. It doesn't really give you an idea of when the percentages are, obviously, but when it goes out, it means it's fully charged, that sort of thing. Take it out and it goes and tells you the actual power bank level. So as you can see at the moment, we've got three LEDs in there, which means it's essentially fully charged. When you put your buds back in, close down the lid and it starts charging. Also, you've got the light on the front, just say there's power in the bank. That goes out for some reason. I'm not entirely sure why that is, but if you do plug in a charging cable, which is USB-C, which is really, really nice to see, plug in USB-C, don't have to worry about which way up it goes, and then the light comes on in the middle. So the middle light is your kind of charging for the case itself, and the two outer lights are the charging lights for the buds. Yeah, hopefully that makes some sense. Luckily though, because you've got nine hours of playback time from the buds and kind of 27 hours from the whole thing, then you really shouldn't be concentrating on the lights too much. So again, going back to the case again, so we've got USB type C charging, and on the bottom gives you some specifications, etc. Actually, I really like this case. It's got a very good premium feel to it. I would have liked it to be a little bit flatter, if anything. I guess because of the actual earbuds themselves, they are actually quite tall. So there's not really a great deal you can do about that. So when they're in the pocket, if you're in the front pocket, they're going to be fine. If you're in your back pocket, they are going to be giving you a little bit of a bulge. But other than that, absolutely fine. So we really should talk about what is the key selling point of these, really. And again, I'm going to say the word solid. Now... Solid also means many things. So solid construction as in physical, but solid as in presence. So when you're actually using these, listening to music, there is yeah, a solid presence. So whether it's the bass, whether it's the mid-range or whether it's the treble, everything is apparent and is there. They don't feel kind of muddy or cloudy or congested, any of those kind of uh, buzzwords that they use these days. Just everything feels as it should. It's a very open sound. Not the most open sound, but it's certainly, when you listen to them the first time, you don't think, ooh, that sounds a little bit kind of muddy or dull. They just, they sound bright, they sound solid. <laughs> I keep on coming back to it, but they do sound solid. So bass reproduction is excellent, and also you've got that bass boost feature, which does knock it up quite a bit. And actually, when you press the four buttons, it's actually really nice because most of these kind of buds, they come through with either Chinese words or whatever to work out what's going on. But these actually are very pleasant in that respect. So even when you turn them on, there's a gentle ding, which tells you they've come on, and there's a slightly different pitch dong when you turn them off. And when you go into super bass mode, it just says super bass mode. And when you switch super bass mode off, it just says normal mode, which makes absolute sense, which I'll try and give you an example of now. So overall, again, a very solid contender. Now we should talk about price, because that does make a massive difference. There's no point being a fantastic set of earbuds if they're ridiculously expensive. Now these at the moment you can get on Amazon.co.uk for in the region of about £30, around about $40 in the US. I'll put some links in the video description so you can check out your local pricing. They seem to be available in pretty much everywhere. If you don't want to get them from Amazon, you can always go to things like eBay or AliExpress. They also sell them there and you don't really save a great deal, similar sort of prices, so it might be worth hunting around, but certainly Amazon prices seem absolutely fine and easily available. So for £30, 
this does change things considerably because for £30, these are going to be great for people who are not overly serious about their audio and don't want to cheap out, but they don't want to spend a ton of money to get something which is obviously kind of next level performance. Even so, these do perform, like I said, very, very well. Bass tracks, very, very well managed. They don't sound distorted or anything, even on the higher volume levels, which these are actually pretty loud. You can, again, tailor the sound with that EQ mode, adding super bass. It does kind of enhance all of those frequencies, including bass, so it doesn't just give you a massive top end. It also gives you a little bit more mid and a little bit more lows. But they do sound you know, bright. You hear instruments very well. The sound separation is excellent. It's very difficult to say anything negative about them, other than... I would have liked to have seen the case being a little bit flatter for storage, but otherwise, for commuters, uh, casual music listeners, these are gonna tick pretty much every box you can consider. And they just work, which is always a good thing. Pairing them is extremely easy. When you take them out of the box, first of all, you get the flashing LED on there, puts them into pairing mode. I should say, actually, if you wanna use them as a, uh, a solo bud on its own, so the left one is kind of like the master channel and pairs with the right. So if you wanna use them as normal stereo, when you pair them for the first time, just choose on your Bluetooth list, just choose the U-Green high tune. If you just take out the right one on its own, it will appear actually in the menu as high tune R. So if you pair with both lots, then yeah, whichever you do, if you just take one out, it'll work on its own. If you take them both out, they'll both work. So most phones or devices will automatically switch to whichever one is present. So that is really easy to use. Yeah, they're they're very good. The touch sensors work exceptionally well, and they just make sense, which makes using a product so much easier. I hate it when you've got a really convoluted kind of system where you have to press one side a certain amount of times and the other one a different. This is great because it's just simple to answer a call or to play and pause music, just tap it once, and that is all you need to remember. And it's the usual thing to kind of hang up, press again or press and hold. Fast forward, two taps either side, go back a track, tap three times, super bass four times, press and hold for your assistant. It just makes sense to me. I don't know if it's uh, the same for you guys. I don't know. Please do let me know in the comment section. Do you think that is the kind of optimum setup? I guess another issue that some people may dislike, which is again is extremely common with all of these types of buds, is you cannot control the volume from the buds themselves. So you can press and hold and get your assistant on your phone, so Android or iOS, and you can say raise or lower the volume, which is very easy to do. Or if you're a, a real purist, you can just turn up the volume on your phone. Very simple to do. But not having the volume control actually on the buds itself, I personally believe actually makes them easier to use. But again, let me know what you think about these in the comments section below. I think that's going to wrap it up for £30. Definitely, definitely worth a look. They are certainly better than some of the slightly cheaper ones we've looked at. The Jammy buds, which are a little bit cheaper, around about the £20 mark. Um, yeah, these blow those out of the water in terms of actual functionality and usability and actually comfort. These are particularly comfortable. Again, put them in your ears, put them in, and then give them a, a very slight twist and that locks them into position. And they do actually a really good job of isolating what is going on around you. Again, take them out, twist them forward, cut and pull them out of your ears. And then you don't get the, uh, the cups going inside out. Yes, yeah, very technical information there, but something which I find very useful to do. And yeah. They're very good, they fit well, they're very solid, as I've said once or twice, definitely worth taking a look at. So if you're on the market for some true wireless earbuds at the moment and you wanna spend around about 30 pounds, these are ones that should definitely be on your shopping list. So this has been the Ugreen Hi-Tune TWS earbuds. I've been Mike, this is Mike's unboxing reviews and how to. And don't forget to like, share and subscribe and we'll catch you again in the next video. Thanks for watching.